Tesla revenue was up 42% in the second quarter. As gas prices rise and more consumers experience electric vehicles, demand for EVs is accelerating. Deliveries were up just 27% to over 250,000 vehicles, but were impacted by COVID-related shutdowns at the company's Shanghai plant. The company's Berlin plant recently hit the 1,000 cars per week milestone, and they expect the new Austin, Texas plant to reach that milestone in the next few months. Tesla CEO Elon Musk also shared that their self-driving software had over 100,000 users now, and they'd driven over 35 million miles with the beta software. Musk believes that's more mileage than all other self-driving technology combined. Tesla continues to set the pace for electric vehicles, self-driving technology, and even robotics. Let's listen in as Musk and the Tesla team discuss the outlook for EVs and the fascinating future of ground transportation. So just as a, as a Q2 recap, uh, Q2 was a unique quarter for Tesla due to a prolonged shutdown of our Shanghai factory. But in spite of all these challenges, it was one of the strongest quarters in our history. Most importantly, in June, we achieved production records in both Fremont and Shanghai. And as a result, we have the potential uh, for a record-breaking second half of the year. Um, I do want to emphasize this is obviously subject to force majeure, things, things outside of our control. Uh, the past few years have, have been uh, quite a few force majeures, um, and uh, it's, been, it's been kind of supply chain hell uh, for several years. Um, credit to our awesome Tesla supply chain team for overcoming um, insanely difficult challenges. Um, and uh, you know, huge thanks to uh, the, the Tesla uh, Shanghai factory team who sacrificed a lot to uh, get the factory back up and running in June and achieve a record uh, output. So uh, also uh, making good progress uh, with production ramp uh, with Berlin. We achieved an important milestone of 1,000 cars a week in June, um, and we're expecting uh, so our, our Giga Texas um, to, to exceed uh, the 1,000 vehicle per week milestone in hopefully in the next few months. Um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, to be clear, we're currently making the cars with the uh, 2170 uh, cells, um, and uh, uh, Drew Beckley will address uh, some of the 4680 questions uh, later in this call. Um, but uh, it, it is worth emphasizing that we have enough 2170 cells to, uh, to satisfy uh, oil vehicle production for the remainder of the year, so we're not dependent on 4680. Um, 46, 4680 will be important next year, uh, but it is not important this year. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that said, we have installed the second generation of manufacturing equipment for 4680 cells in Texas. And um, and even at our established factories like Fremont and Shanghai, we continue to expand capacity. Uh, regarding autopilot, we have now deployed uh, FSD beta with city streets driving capability to over 100,000 owners. Um, they're, they're very happy with uh, the capability of the system and will continue to improve it uh, every week. We've now driven over 35 million miles with FSD beta. That's more autonomous miles than any company company we're aware of. I think probably more than it might be more than any all other companies combined. Um, so and and that mileage is growing exponentially. With regard to manufacturing and technology, about uh, five or six years ago, we said we wanted to become the the, the best manufacturer in the world, um, and that that is somewhat counterintuitively. Uh, to, to some people, uh, what will actually be, I think, our strongest competitive advantage. Um, we're, we're super pro manufacturing here at Tesla, and um, in general, we, we want to encourage uh, other companies to be super pro manufacturing. And um, in, in general, I think it, it is a, a very important thing to do. Um, we need to make stuff <laughs> and make it efficiently, and that's manufacturing. So, um, so we've made a lot of advancements in manufacturing processes, um, as we now show in the shareholder deck. Uh, thanks to our uh, the large castings, we, we make the world's largest castings. Uh, we reduced body welding robot count by seventy percent per unit of capacity in uh, Austin and Berlin. Uh, so that's um, you know, they call it roughly uh, a body shop that is. Th roughly three times smaller than would, would normally be the case. Um, and I should say it's also lighter, uh, cheaper, and has uh, superior noise vibration and harshness. 
So it, it, it's good on, on every level. Uh, but this journey is not over. We'll uh, bring a whole, uh, another level of uh, simplicity and uh, manufacturing improvements with Cybertruck uh, and future products that we're not quite ready to talk about now, but I think will be very exciting to unveil in the future. Um, our safety team also introduced a feature that tensions seatbelts if the vision system detects imminent collision, uh, which has never been done before. So um, you can imagine that if you have a seatbelt that uh, only tensions upon impact, uh, you have very little time to tension the seatbelt. Um, you, if you've got to be, the car has literally got to be crunching um, to trigger the seatbelt tensioner. But because we have vision, we can actually see that a collision is about to occur uh, with 100% probability before it actually happens. Um, and so we can tension the seat belts um, and we can even adjust the, uh, the airbag deployment uh, because we, we can see, not just feel. Um, this is a, a fundamental safety advantage that Teslas uh, are now able to offer. And then this is also an over the air update. So if this, this is something that will, um, that will, will be in place in, in all cars that have at least uh, AP3 hardware. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we exited Q2 with stronger, a stronger production rate than ever before. Um, our team continues to focus on Cybertruck production readiness um, and some future platform design. Uh, we are expecting to be, uh, still, still expecting to be in production with the Cybertruck in the middle of next year. And uh, we're very, very excited about that product. I think it might, it might actually be our best product ever. Uh, let's see, uh, and FSD beta is on track to be released for all of North American customers before the end of this year. Um, and hopefully, it, if we get regulatory approval, we'll also be releasing it uh, hopefully in Europe and some other parts of the world. Uh, we're hosting our AI day in a few months. I think people will be amazed at what we're able to show off in, in AI day. So it, it basically, it, it, <clears throat> there's a, a tremendous amount to look forward to in the second half of this year. And I want to thank all of our employees and suppliers for their super hard work during these challenging times. Super appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now let's go to the questions from investors. The first question is, Chinese EV manufacturers seem to be doing a better job than their Western comp competitors, excluding Tesla, at innovating in software and design. How can Tesla make sure the company is staying ahead of those manufacturers, both within China and outside of China? Well. Uh, the, right now, the, the best uh, Chinese EV manufacturer is Tesla China. Um, we are we're actually doing the best thanks to our incredible team in China. Um, but I have a lot of respect for the uh, Chinese uh, car manufacturers and EV manufacturers in particular. I think they will be a force to be reckoned with uh, worldwide. Um, they're very they're smart and they're hardworking. And uh, I think uh, anyone who is not and any company that's not uh, as competitive as them will obviously suffer a, a market share decline. Um, so we, I would say we have a lot of respect for the uh, car companies in China um, and then their capabilities. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, Elon recently tweeted about lowering prices once inflation cools down. Can you elaborate on what do you mean by cooling down and how aggressively the company will lower prices? More broadly, how do you think about the auto pricing long term? Yeah, so since we have there's there's a quite a long wait when somebody orders in a car. Uh, in some cases, like six six months. In some cases, it could be up to a year. We have to anticipate what the probable inflation rate is over that period of time. Um, so uh, that's that's what we're trying to do. Um, at, at, when we see. At, you know, when any, or if we see indications that the inflation rate is declining, then uh, we would not need to increase our car prices. It's possible that there could be a slight decrease in, in, in car prices, but this is fundamentally de dependent on, you know, macroeconomic inflation. Uh, it's not something we control. Um, if, if I were to guess, and I wouldn't, you know, take this with a grain of salt, I, I think inflation will decline towards the end of this year. Uh, we're certainly seeing uh, prices of commodities trending lower. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, how do you feel the progress of FSD is going? And does Andrea Carpathi's leaving have any significant impact 
on timelines or potential progress. Well, since Andre was writing all the code by himself, um, <laughs> you know, naturally things have come to a grinding halt. Um, insert irony. Um, so uh, uh, Andre is obviously uh, Andre is awesome, and we have tremendous amount of respect for Andre. Um, uh, you know, he's decided to. I think he, he he wants to contribute more to I think core AI at at, at, at an academic level um, and get back to coding individually. So, um, but we've got a team of um, about 120 people in our uh, software AI group uh, that are extremely talented, and um, I think we will uh, have. I'm highly confident we will solve the full self driving, and it still seems to be this year. Um, I know people they're like, you know, it always says that, but uh, it does seem to be like, like, it does seem as though we're converging on solving full self driving this year. Okay, thank you very much. And the last question is when will the Cybertruck be officially available? We're, we're hoping to uh, start delivering them in the middle, the middle of next year. Thank you very much. And now let's go to analyst questions. Uh, the first question comes from Pierre Ferragou from New Street Research. Pierre, Pierre, feel free to unmute yourself. Elon, you always mention you know this 50% per annum sustainable growth target that you guys have. And and so so my question here is uh, when we when when we see like the difficulty regarding like commodities, raw materials, uh, swinging prices, I'm kind of wondering. As you are planning for this 50% per annum growth, if we stand today over the next five to 10 years, you know, how much of that do you do you feel you've secured uh, through your work at uh, uh, the, uh, entering into long-term contracts and things like that? And well, it's, I think it's very difficult to predict uh, anything 10 years from now. I hope civilization is still around, frankly. Um, <laughs> I would count that as a win. Um, it's not that fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every day. Um, you know, hopefully we haven't had World War Three by then. Um, or the Earth hasn't burned up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, the we we do see uh, constraints in um, refining of the materials necessary for uh, lithium-ion batteries. I, I do want to emphasize this is. It is not due to a scarcity of the raw material. Um, you know, in the case of lithium, lithium is one of the most common elements on Earth. It's pretty much everywhere. Um, but, but, but refining of the lithium uh, into ultra high purity battery grade lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate is uh, quite difficult and requires a massive amount of machinery. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard, hard thing to scale. Um, as well, it is also difficult uh, for, uh, to create the uh, anode and cathode. Uh, the, you know, we, I, I think we, 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 my guess is maybe two thirds of, of uh, batteries will be uh, iron phosphate uh, or maybe iron phosphate with some manganese. Um, and there's plenty of, there's a ridiculous amount of iron on Earth. In fact, uh, Earth is, uh, you know, a little bit of trivia. Somebody says, uh, what is Earth made of more than anything else? Uh, iron. Iron is the number one ingredient of Earth, I mass. Uh, number two is oxygen. Yeah, which is wild. But yeah, yeah. Oxygen is basically rust. <laughs> you stuck them together. <laughs> We're a rust wall. <laughs> that's roughly, uh, that's almost two thirds of Earth, I think, is rust. Um, <laughs> uh, we are like a rusty ball bearing. Um, with a little bit of other stuff, uh, so, um, but plenty of lithium. So, um, anyway, there's, there's not like a shortage of materials. Uh, Thank you. Uh, the next question comes from Emmanuel Rosner from Deutsche Bank. Emmanuel, go ahead and un unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I have a question on your vehicle demand and then a quick follow-up on supply. Uh, first on the demand side, are you seeing any sort of uh, pressure um, in the order book or the pace of new order or any sort of like slowdown as a result of the pressures that the consumer uh, is experiencing? Are you worried about it um, in light of your view of the risk to the economy uh, that I think you expressed, Ilan? Well, right now our problem is very much production. 
So we have long leads on, as, as anyone can tell, if they order our car, um, it, you know, uh, if you order a Model Y, you, it will arrive sometime next year. Um, so this is clearly not an issue uh, for, for many months for us. Our problem is overwhelmingly uh, that of production. Um, so 